All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, I'm going to be going over how to hook up your Max Finder to Azu Store NAS. So this way, you'll be able to easily grab files just like they're on a local hard drive from your Azu Store NAS anywhere on your home network. I recommend a wired Ethernet connection for the best performance, but if you're on Wi-Fi, it's still going to work, and for the most part, you won't even notice, especially like editing Word documents and things like that. So it's really great and it really makes your NAS into this home cloud where everybody can access these files anytime they're on the home network incredibly easily. And so this is actually my first Azu Store video. They did send me this unit for free, but there's no obligation for me to them or anything like that. They just said, hey, if you'd like to make videos in it, that'd be great. And also I'll probably be doing a review on that. So I figure I'll go over how to set up an Azu Store. And this is that first one. All right, so when you're connecting between a Mac and a NAS, you actually have probably three primary options for connecting, SMB, NFS, and AFP. If you look through Azu Store, they're actually going to recommend that you use AFP with a Mac, but honestly, you should not. Apple has deprecated the AFP protocol, and really, it is just not worth it. There are some stability issues, and you could get some file corruption, and honestly, SMB is just so much more stable. NFS technically can get you better performance in some very specific instances, such as a database or really small read and writes. But for the average home user, it is not going to be faster. It's probably going to be slower and it's much more difficult to set up than SMB. And so in this video, we're going to be going over how to hook up your Max Finder to the SMB server on Azu Store. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is log into the Azu Store and that's that web interface. And we're going to go ahead and go into services. And so as you see here, actually under Windows, which is kind of the confusing part of this, there's CIFS, which is really a Samba server. And so we're going to be setting up the Samba server right here. And so the protocols I'd recommend, actually, unless you're running some really old stuff, I'd bump this up for the minimum protocol to at least SMB2, because SMB1 is really slow and actually has a couple security vulnerabilities. And so we're actually going to be setting up the CIFS section, which is a Samba server, which is what most protocols have. SMB works for all of Mac, Windows, and Linux really well, and I would really just recommend it for whatever you're running. It'll probably be the most compatible and likely the fastest. So out of the box, most of the settings are good, but there is one thing. You do want to up this to SMB2 for the minimum protocol, because unless you're running some really old things, SMB1 has a little bit of security vulnerabilities and is overall just slower. For SMB signing, you do not want to turn this to force because it will really slow down your NAS. So default is good. And finally, I would also recommend turning on VFS modules to help with Mac compatibility because that's what we're going to be running with. And that's it. So now we're going to go ahead and click apply. And then the other thing I would do is go into the Mac OS X and make sure that this is ticked off. Because remember, Mac is no longer supporting the AFP protocol, and really, it is just going to cause some issues with you. All right, so now we're basically set up to go. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is make sure we have a shared folder. So to do that, we're going to go into File Explorer, and under ADM, we're just going to go ahead and click Create New Shared Folder. And so we'll go ahead and say that this is our users folder where everybody can just work out of everything. So if, you're, if it's your house, maybe you store all your photos on there and then everybody has their own private home directory. But this is just show a shared folder that everybody has access to. And then I would always recommend enabling the recycling bin because it can just help out in so many scenarios. And then for permissions, you can really set this to however you'd like it. Since this is going to be for your entire family, I'm going to say for all users, read, write. Then if you are just going SMB and you're doing something like an office, you can enable Windows ACL access control list. And this really allows you very fine control of who has access to what folders within the shared folder. But it's going to be out of the scope of this tutorial. And for most home users, I would just say create a new shared folder for every single scenario you'd like. But obviously with businesses, you don't want to have thousands of shared folders for all these subcategories. So we're just going to go ahead and select that and click next. And now it's just going to go ahead and create it. And so now we've got it right here. So now we can go ahead and mount this on our Mac. And it's incredibly easy. And we've got basically two different options. Remember this IP address up here, or you can also use the server name .local. So you go into settings, network, and server name, and change this to whatever you like it to be. We can just call it NAS. And it's gonna go ahead and restart everything. But by doing this, we'll be able to connect to NAS.local on our Mac rather than remembering an IP address or that complex server name. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and open up Finder. All right, so now I'm in Finder. So now we've got basically two separate options for hooking up to this thing. If we go into network, we're going to see that there's this NAS and that's that ASUS NAS. So we can double click on it and we're gonna to have to say connect as. And it's gonna say you're attempting to connect to it, connect, continue. And now you're going to log in. This is the username and password for whatever user is on the NAS's account. So mine is set up as Will. And then it's also really nice to remember the password so you don't have to type in every time in Keychain. And so now, just like that, we now have access to it. And I can double click on it here, and boom, just like that, I can read and write to it. I can grab a folder. I can grab a folder from my desktop and just drag it into it. And it's just going to transfer it right into the NAS. And it's now going to be available to everybody else on the network. It's also going to show up right here with this shared home, which is just incredibly easy to do. All right, and so just like that, you're now connected. Whenever you leave the network, it'll disconnect and probably give you an error. But as soon as you get back to the network, you can always get to it there. And then once you're done, you can also just go ahead and click eject on it. And it's going to go ahead and inject it. And it's really just that easy. This is going to give you such better performance than trying to download everything from files. We can also now go back into ASUS store and we can look in File Explorer and we'll see that all those folders are now in there and it's just so easy to set up and so much more efficient than trying to download files from here and make modifications to that. The last thing I'll note is not everything can go on a SMB shared folder. Specifically, the one thing that most people will probably run into an issue with is actually Lightroom catalogs. You cannot put a Lightroom catalog on an SMB shared folder. You can put all the files on there, all those raw files, but you can't put the actual catalog due to performance issues. And so that is one thing that will need to stay on the local hard drive. But other than that, you can stick everything on SMB share and it will just work like it's local. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other ASUS store tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.